some huge, 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 huge news here. And I, I am completely shocked, to be honest with you, because it didn't seem like the Mets were going to do much uh, going into the season. But apparently, the Mets have signed J.D. Martinez to a one-year deal for $12.5 million. Some of that money is deferred. Now, before we get into this video, hit that, subs hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. Hit the like button. This is a... This is, I'm going to go for a while. So you know, all the other YouTubers are on right now. But I'm going to be on for a, a little bit because we got a lot to go through. Uh, the Mets have made this signing. It's not official yet. But J.D. Martinez is a huge signing for the Mets because really they needed to do something in the worst way with this offense. This offense was dragging. Now a couple of things. This tells you really right off the bat. <clears throat> right off the bat that the Mets were not comfortable with, with Vientos and Beatty in this lineup. And I don't blame them, uh, to be honest with you. Neither one of them really had that great of a spring, aside from the fact that uh, uh, Beatty's OPS has been over 800, but he's picked it up over the last couple of days. But it tells you that the Mets also, I wouldn't say, the Mets probably really feel very strongly about this club, that they were willing to sign a major back. This is... Even though he's 36 years old, he is a major bat for this line. You can bat him behind Pete. Pete finally, finally, after how many years with the Mets, he'll have a legit guy to bat behind him, a legit guy. Now, before we get into further, hit that like button. We get a, a, a really uh, a lot of likes onto this video. And uh, I would mention if you if you are coming to the channel the first time. I am very happy tonight. I know you're all happy. I know you're all excited. Hello, Jay. We need a JD. The Morph Man Evolved. What's up there, buddy? What my mods? I haven't seen you in a long time. I haven't done a live stream in quite a while, although I did one a few weeks ago. But this is big news here, and, and I can't be more excited when the Mets haven't signed him. A couple of things. Uh, the Mets are going to be paying him $4.5 million this year. And they're going to defer payments between 2034 and 2038. Hello, Paul B. How are you? So this is an interesting move by the Mets because it basically tells you that they feel that they're going to be good this year. Uh, you don't sign a veteran bat like this if you think you're going to be all in on the kids. All right. Uh, this was a lineup, just looking at it uh, from afar, just not enough power on it. You know, and I didn't really, <clears throat> I didn't really feel that um, they're going to bat uh, McNeil fourth. I mean, they hear them saying uh, that they're going to bat him clean up. I was like, you know, I don't, I don't see them doing that. Hello, Miguel Ledesma, Ledesma. Vientos needs to be traded now. Nah, why? What's the rush? If you're going to trade him, what are you going to get for him? Uh, now, I would mention there has been some talk that the Mets would would uh, basically cobble some of their uh, infields, because they got a lot of infields in their farm system, that they would move them uh, for a pitcher in somebody's farm system. But let's let's really see when they make this official uh, what the deal he is. I, I mean, this, is, this was unexpected by me, by your host. I was not expecting this, to be honest with you. This kind of caught me off guard. So to see this tonight, this is great news uh, for us. Because it tells you that the Mets are committed to winning this year, which I always felt they were, you know. Um, now, over the next couple of days, I'm sure by tomorrow, I'm sure by uh, Saturday that this will be made official. I would hope so. Uh, let me read a couple of things. Uh, yes, yeah, so this happened about a half hour ago. This is from uh, John Heyman. John is Padres and Mets all improved with late signings nationally getting interesting. Hmm, interesting. Sir Foul Player of Brooklyn. That's a that's a new ending to your name. King Hut, thanks for coming on tonight. Yes, it's very excited. Hit that like button. If you're coming in for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I will be doing more live streams. I, I was meaning to do a live stream earlier today. And I kind of got a little bit backed up with things. Uh, been very quiet on all the on every channel, even on other channels, even on bigger channels of mine. I've been very quiet, but 
I was I was not planning to come on tonight. I was going to come on during the day and just talk about the club. I will be back tomorrow on a live stream. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a little more information on this uh, this move that the Mets made tonight. PSO Onich, how are you? The, thank goodness any signs are good at this point. Happy they did this. Finally, give Pete some protection. The music man says yes. Yes. Uh, very exciting night. Uh, they they know what they have. And, and again, like I said a few minutes ago, the Mets are looking at this club, and Stern's a smart guy. Okay? He's probably looking at this club, and he's probably saying to himself, look, this team looks a little bit better than he probably thought it was going to be. Uh, and how I look at it, I think this team's going to be a little bit better. Obviously, it's difficult to judge it based off the fact that they pitched so well uh, and, the, and the fact that their offense has been kind of sluggish. But their pitching has been pretty good. But it is spring training. So we can't, like, kind of – we got to sort of temper that. Hello, Kevin Reardon. How you doing? Everybody's happy tonight. This has been a very – and the heart means a very, very uh, grumpy offseason. This man says Stearns waited him out. He damn straight did. Get it for four and a half million dollars. So it's basically about nine million, ten million that they're going to be paying for him with the hundred ten percent luxury tax, and they deferred the payments for thirty uh, twenty thirty four to twenty thirty eight. But that's a one and a half million dollars. They said so. He's got he got a twelve million dollar contract from the Mets, and he got over this is the course of five years. Uh, so once. You know, um, four and a half is seven and a half. So seven and a half over that time, he'll get that money back deferred. Okay, that's fine. That's fine by me. I mean, you know, at this point, um, he he the Mets got him as a desperate player. He was really the last big player, the last big player that was out there, uh, other than say uh, Jordan Montgomery. Hello, Romeo One Kenobi. Dylan B. asked, what about Vientos now? Well, that's a good question. Uh, now, Stearns had said that he was, that the Mets, the, the two young players and in, in, uh, uh, we're talking about, Vientos and Beatty, that they were going to, they're going to be on the roster. Uh, and whether they, now I wouldn't mention this before I forget. Uh, Martinez played 100 games last year. But he drove in a hundred runs. So that's that's awesome production. Awesome. Oh, I would, I would mention this, of course. Hit hit the like button. I want to get some more likes in here. It'd be nice to get two more likes. Get ten likes here. But um, yeah, so Martinez only played a hundred games. So if he plays that, and the Mets get the same sort of production, uh, they can kind of move you know pieces in. They can move. Uh, uh, they can move in Pete a little bit. Put McNeil there a little bit, you know. Marte, uh, this takes a lot of pressure off of Marte too, because I think Marte they were kind of thinking about putting Marte batting him fifth, which, which I didn't have a problem with, but he, I think he's better suited down further in the lineup than he was uh, uh, in the middle of the lineup. But uh, we'll see how that 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 how that transpires. But now the Mets have a number five hitter. This is a legit number five hitter. Uh, from Romy One Kenobi, I'm a Yankees fan, but I like your channel. So just wanted to leave a like and a sub. Well, thank you, sir. Ding, ding, ding. I don't have my bell right me. <laughs> Got to get my bell back out. I I will have developments on the bell. The bell will be back very soon within the next month. But, uh, you know, the Mets have been very active this offseason. They've been very active with the farm system and very active to the minor league system. They got rid of so many of the dead weight in this organization. They got rid of Guillaume. They got rid of uh, Vogel back. I have to bring him up because you want to know why Pete Alonso hit 210 or whatever it was last year. When you have that kind of a disaster batting behind you in the lineup, you have no chance to have a good season. J.D. Martinez puts the Mets in, in, in a stratosphere now to where this guy just doesn't just hit pitching. He hits good pitching. When he was with the Yankees, when he was with the Red Sox, he killed the Yankees. Absolutely killed the Yankees. You know. You sure about that? Hi, hun. How is our injury situation? Well, you know, I'm doing okay. Sometimes my knee ball doesn't make. Oh, you mean, you mean the baseball? Oh. Well, there's a little update on Senga. 
Uh, they said that Senga is is going to start pitching. He's going to start uh, taking the take it to the mound soon, uh, which is a good a good thing. Uh, yeah, I mean Martinez kills good pitching. He kills good pitching. He doesn't kill bad pitching. Like like I was not too uh, enthused about J D Davis at all because we we've been there done that. He can hit, but the problem with Davis is that he doesn't hit good pitching. He doesn't hit high velocity pitching. Martinez is a different animal. He's a different story in that. Now, people are posting different lineups with the Mets. I don't really like this idea of Pete and Bat and the Pete Bat and the third in this lineup. Are they going to put this out here? Uh, Brandon Nimmo, Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonso, JD Martinez, Jeff McNeil, Alvarez, Mar- Marte, Brett Bade, I guess Vientos there, and Harrison Bader. Now, I would mention the Met defense in the outfield has gotten considerably better with Bader out there. Um, that is an, that is, I would mention that's going to, you have to keep him healthy, but he's a very good defensive player, but he, he can't hit, he can't bat, get about him eighth or ninth. Uh, uh, Paul B says the Mets can't keep both Beatty and Vientos on the roster now. Can they? Why, yeah, why not? Like I said, uh, Martinez only played 103 games last year, 106 games last year. So you got about 60 games that, you know, he's, he's 36 years old. Okay. You want to get the most value out of his at-bats. You want to get him the most value in terms of keeping him on the field. Now, he's a DH. He's going to be the designated hitter on this club. I pray to God, keep my fingers crossed, that the Mets finally get a legit designated hitter here. Because we've been talking about having a good DH for the last four years, and we haven't had it. And we thought we were going to have it with Robbie Cano. And Vogelback was there for a while. It was a disaster. And we had Darren Ruff here, but hopefully now, uh, he'll stabilize this lineup. I've been complaining for three years since I've been doing this channel that the Mets need another legit bat in this lineup. Now, he is 36 years old. He had an injury uh, two years ago with the Red Sox with his back. So the Mets have to sort of figure out what they want to do moving forward uh, in terms of how they uh, you know, keep him healthy. Paul B, who's the guy on the outside if they keep both? Well, it all depends on uh, – his thing, Paul B, is that it depends on who's playing well and who's not playing well. Whoever's not playing well will be on, on the lookout, will be on the outside looking at. Uh, Beatty's picked it up over the last uh, couple of days, but he hasn't had a great spring, and he's not a great defensive player. Uh, Musiman says he's a little bit better than Vogelback. Vogelback sucks. Did Vogelback make the Blue Jays? You know, if Vogelback makes the Blue Jays because he swung the bat. Hold on, I need a drink. Look, 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 look. So you know, I uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. Miss, I really am gonna miss Vogelback. I tell you, no, actually, uh, my biggest concern of the last few years was to get another legitimate bat in this lineup, specifically in the middle of this lineup. Uh, in 2022, when the Mets were going down the stretch, I felt they needed another hitter in this lineup. And they brought in a couple of uh, really crappy bats. <laughs> I mean, really brought in a bunch of crappy bats and, and Vogel back and Dan Ruff. And Dan Ruff was a complete, total disaster as I moved my table over a little bit. He was a complete disaster. Um, and it turns out he's pretty much shot, you know. And that was a mistake, obviously, on the former general manager and also... Uh, the idea that the Mets sort of pinned in uh, to uh, pinned in with Vogelback. Chris C says this. Here, we got to have the naysayer. Chris C. Uh, question, can JD pitch? If not, why are we excited? I mean, come on. Lighten up, dude. Lighten up. I mean, you know, if you can't, if you can't be excited for baseball, go hang out with Frank Fleming. Go hang out with all these negative, bitchy, complaining accounts online. Okay? We love baseball here. We love rooting for the Mets. We love positivity here. We don't want this. I will mention this. I don't see you complaining about uh, 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 Shoei Otani. I'm sure you wanted the Mets to get Shoei Otani. That's for sure. How many people wanted him? And look look what happened there. Uh the rotation. Oh, Chris. Oh, Chrissy, you are one of those, huh? Well, nobody's signing him. Nobody's signing him, uh, Chrissy. So why don't you go talk to the other 29 teams that haven't signed him? 
You, another guy who's obsessed with Trevor Bauer. If you think Trevor Bauer is good, look at his history prior to him leaving the Indians. Would you want a guy on your team throwing a ball to the outfield when your Hall of Fame manager is ready to take him out? Would you want to do that? Would you want to have that guy on your team? Oh, he pitches great. He, he's a number three starter. He's not an ace, okay? This is about, and I would say this. David Stearns knows what he's doing. He knows how to put a pitching staff together. We saw that in, in Milwaukee. Okay. That's the one thing I'll say about him, that give him credit. He knows how to put a pitching staff together. Because those pitching staffs in Milwaukee were always very good. So, so if you think it's garbage, that's your opinion. But that's why they play the games. All right. Goodbye. You're bringing up stuff that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Sorry. Bye-bye. Get a life. Bringing up Jose Reyes. You're bringing up... Obviously, you're not a Met fan. You're just a bitch. Goodbye. <laughs> From Missy Porias, one of my favorite guys on Twitter. Hey, I love, love this, love, love this signing. Um... Yes, it, it is a very strong one. The Mets need to do this kind of a move. This was very important. It tells you that the Mets feel that they are in better shape than what are saying. So we shall see if he still has uh, some gas in the tank. He's just 36 years old. And he's a guy that has got a lot of miles on him. He's had a back injury in the past. It'll be fun to see where he is at as we get closer now. We're a week away from the Major League Baseball season. Um... And obviously the price was good. Let me ask you a question just before I, I move on to things. If you're on a live stream and you're talking to the per, the content creator, you're talking about the Mets, why are you talking about Jose Reyes and his past? It has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Crazy. Yes, he got sent off to the Phantom Zone. I hate doing that to people. I really do. But some people just cannot control themselves. Uh, Missy L said, got J.D. on an Otani-like deal. How about that? Ha, ha. Well, I don't want that kind of deal. <laughs> but you got He don't need an interpreter. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, don't be says, what does our starting rotation look like? Well, a couple of things. Um, I would mention that if Severino is any good, okay, if Severino is any good, if I cut out, I'm sorry. If Luis Severino is any good, if he's healthy, he's going to be pretty good. He has not been healthy in quite a few years. Um, but Nye has looked pretty good in spring so far. I, I love the fact that he got a haircut. He got a haircut, and and hopefully we'll get a Jacob deGrom type like performance out of him. Now, 65 people in this live stream. Can I get a like? Can I get an amen that the Mets signed a, a, a big uh, a player here? Even if he's 36 years old. But can I get a like here? Get some more likes here. Uh, if you're not uh, familiar with this channel, I am the greatest. I am the greatest Mets YouTuber on uh, on this platform. Uh, to be honest with you, I know everything about the Mets. And I only care about the Mets winning. And that's all I care about, folks. Uh, I did not, I will say this, I wanted to set up a nice live stream here with some music, uh, and it just didn't, obviously this is uh, the top of my head to do this. Uh, Jonathan Matos, what's your bench look like now? Well, a couple of things. The bench, now we're going to have Narvaez as the backup catcher. Okay, Vientos Beatty will be the other guys on the bench. Uh, the Mets have Taylor Ty Tyrone Taylor will be the fourth outfielder. DJ Stewart. I don't have my list here. So I'll top off the top of my head. Tyrone Stewart is gonna be I mean DJ Stewart is gonna be part of this. So many DJs, D JDs. Uh you have all these guys, and of course you have do off the top of my head, excuse me. We got Tyrone Taylor. We have um uh, uh, Stewart, 
uh, probably Zach Short, competing with uh, Joey Wendell, and possibly Jose Iglesias. He's had a pretty good spring. Uh, we have a couple guys that are kind of on the bubble. You know, G-Man uh, Choi's on the bubble. Uh, also, we have... Uh, also, you have uh, Luke Voigt. Like I said, I don't have my list in front of me. Uh, but that's kind of what we're talking about. Uh, Santiago Posada says, JD is awesome for the Mets. Agreed. Paul B says, you're only going to have a four- to five-man bench. That's right, because you're going to have a lot of guys in the bullpen. 12 to 13 uh, pitchers out there. And, the whole, you know, without within the whole, like, uh, uh, pitching staff. So half your team's the pitching staff. And the other half is the guys on the bench. Uh now this is a very it's gonna be a very interesting lineup now because now you have a guy that can actually hit in the middle of this lineup that can hit good pitching. So the Mets aren't gonna get overrun against guys that can throw hard late in the game. They're not gonna be overrun by guys that, that start and they, they throw 95 to 99 miles an hour. Uh, so you're gonna have a lineup that has more depth than it had before this. Uh, this gives them a professional hitter in this line. I wish he was younger. I wish he was five years younger. We got him like the 30-year-old uh, J.D. Martinez. But we'll take it for what it's worth. Uh, Mike, where in the batting order will J.D. hit behind Pete or lower? He will hit back directly behind Pete. He will be the number... Wherever Pete hits, he will bat behind him. Because you need a guy that's legit uh, protection for him. Mets, not, Mets have never had... A real good guy to protect Pete in the lineup. And now they finally have it. And his last year, yeah, possibly. But I think Pete will resign. I think the Mets will resign him. Matthew Landau. What's up, man? What's up, Hutt? This is the best sign the Mets have made in the past two years. Pete finally has protection. Yes. Yes, he does. See, yes. Mike, uh, Mike, let's see your if I had to bet, I think the roster is now set. You think JD starts the season, or who needs some time in St. Louis? Well, that's a good question. You know, what kind of like I mean, ramp up does he need? They're gonna bring and they gotta get him into camp by tomorrow. Tomorrow he's gotta come into camp tomorrow and get ready for the season. Uh, he's gonna he'll probably have to play a lot of minor league games. You don't want to push him. You don't want to push him. Um. So, you know, and then I saw videos before of him like swinging the bat in a cage, but that's not the same as as in game preparation, in game, you know, speeds and everything else. And uh, they might take a little. I don't know if he's gonna be on the opening day roster, but if we got a week left. He's only DH. And he's not playing. He don't play. He doesn't play the field anymore. When he played the field, he was an outfielder. But you know, this is this is exciting. I'm mean, really, I'm really pumped up for this. How could you not be? Right, Jeremy Berman says this. Yes, he needs to face live pitching. Uh, music Man says, I'm sure he was working out. Absolutely, absolutely working out. I would say this again. Let's get to let's get five more likes on this video. Uh, the more likes I get on the live stream, uh, the chances of it getting out to YouTube after it's been recorded, after we've discussed our favorite team, America's team. And I always call, I've been calling them America's team for the last uh, few months because everybody online, everybody in social media, everybody outside of social media are so invested in what the Mets do as a team. You can't help but think that this is America's team. Uh, everybody wants to know good, bad, or indifferent. What the Mets are going to do. And I won't say this. Thank God the Mets did not sign Otani. <laughs> Again. Uh, Santiago Pisana says, so, so Nimmo Lindor, Marte, McNeil, Pete, then JD. I don't see Marte batting high in this lineup now. Uh, how I look at this lineup. You want me to tell you what I think? I know that's what you want. <laughs> you want Nimmo? Right now, Nimmo. And then there's no rush to bat him lower in the lineup now. With Martinez here. Nimmo, Lindor, I bat McNeil third. Marte's in the middle of the line, bottom of the line. Nimmo, Lindor, Nimmo, uh, McNeil, P. 
Pete, J.D. Martinez, then Marte, then Alvarez, then Beatty, then Bader. Or you could flip-flop Bader and, and Beatty, you know. Uh, that's not a big deal. The bottom line is not a big deal now. But I'd like to take a little pressure off of Alvarez, batter seventh, leave him alone. If he does really well, you can bat him, him hard in the lineup. Uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on him early in the season because he's a very young player still, and he has a pitching stat that he has to run. And that is his priority on this team and going forward. And he's had a great spring with the with behind the plate. Now, I would mention, you're going to have guys that are going to play a lot. Tyrone Taylor is going to play a lot because uh, he's probably going to fill in a lot for Marte. The Mets are going to have to manage him better to keep him on the field. He is a key guy in this lineup still. Uh, when he played great in 2022, uh, the Mets had an awesome lineup. And once he got hurt, it just it looked like a totally different team. Uh, Amicio says, I like that lineup, but I think they'll have Alonzo bat third and, and GD fourth to spread out the lefties. Now, if you if you were to do that, okay, I mean you got uh, Lindor. It's a switch error. And he kills lefties and righties um, equally. Um, now, I'm more of a traditionalist. I like my, my number three, three, the four hitter batting fourth. You know, I'm not really too... I mean, the one good thing you can say is you bat third, he gets more... He gets up in the first inning. You know, that's the only thing. He'll get more uh, chances to get in the bat late, or early in the game and later in the game if you need it. Uh, <clears throat> obviously. I mean, if you bat third... Gets up in the first inning, obviously. But I like him batting a uh, uh, cleanup. Uh, now, going back to the pitching staff, the only like concern I have with the pitching staff is Adrian Hauser. Because he's been sort of a uh, middle reliever, sixth starter his career with the, with the Brewers. And there have been guys that had better springs. Jose Butos had a better spring than him. Um... Uh, and to me, that's that's kind of my own concern about the pitching staff. I think the guys they have in the pitching staff, I think they'll be pretty good. You'll get a guy in uh, Severino, if he's healthy, you'll get a good performance. Quintana's a pro. Uh, he's a fourth star in the Mets, I forgot. <laughs> but please, of course, hit that subscribe button and like this video. Uh, let's see. Mike, do you think we are getting a, a two right-handed heavy now? Or just find the way we are. I think they're fine. I mean, I, to get another power hit, it's a right-handed hitter is huge. Because then if you bring in a tough lefty, you've got another guy batting behind Pete. So you can't bring a lefty in. You know. Uh, uh, from Music Man, Hut, do you think Christian Scott is ready? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Tyler McGill. Now, I would mention about McGill. A couple of things about McGill. McGill pitches great in April. That's has been his his mo. Uh, he that's been his mo. He pitches great in April. The thing about McGill is he walks a lot of batters and he gives up home runs. One of the biggest concerns I've had this offseason is that the Mets kept Jeremy Hefton. There's three of the four years that the Mets have had him as pitching coach. The Mets pitching has not been very good, so that's a concern. The fact that they still kept him and I don't see guys like McGill and in particular him and. Peterson take a major step forward. So McGill is a, is a concern of mine but for later on in the season, not the first uh, month. I think he'll pitch really well. Obama's baseball, Houston Nationals on top. Okay. All right. Good for them. <laughs> you know. Uh, they, they weren't on top last year when the uh, the Rangers uh, won the World Series. Hold on, I need a drink. Look, 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 look. And... Uh, now, the, I think the bullpen is going to be the Mets' strength this year. Uh, with, with Diaz coming back. I mean, Diaz came in last week, and they played that music. Oh, man, you, you talk about complete, Who's ever seen that kind of energy in a, in a spring training game? But that, that tells you uh, how important he is and how much they missed him last year. Not only, not only in, the, uh, in the bullpen, but in that clubhouse. Because obviously he must have been a big leader on that clubhouse. And if you notice, the Mets had a lousy September. He did not pitch much. 
Um, now, going back to uh, someone else said about Christian Scott. I did not see his performance the other day. Other than some clips. He's got very... He's got that sweeper. I need to see it on TV live. I need to see that pitch you know, live to get an idea of what it is. What is it, like a slider, but it's got a different grip on it. Um, and he's been throwing... And the Mets, you know, young players, they've all been throwing this, the cutter, too. And I guess a lot of this stuff was developed in the Mets pitching lab. And now you're starting to see some really good developments within the Mets farm system. Um, a lot of people saying that Scott is going to be the next big pitcher coming through the Mets system. It's not going to be Mike Vassell. He'll be here before Mike Vassell. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, you know, I, I haven't seen him other than in these clips from yesterday um, or from the other day, whatever it was. And But I saw a couple of the Mets, other starters, other pitchers um, in Brandon Sprout. He, you saw him, if you blink, you missed him. This was in that uh, breakout game last week. And obviously, we saw him. We saw uh, Calvin Ziegler at the end of the game. And we saw Nolan McClain. I did a video on Nolan McClain on the prospect hut. And, of course, I, I have done... A lot of stuff in the Met prospects, so I know the Met. I know the Met farm system now pretty well. Just haven't seen them. Uh, Elaine Kerner says the Mets signed JD Dave, uh, JD Martinez. Oh, you don't say. Thank you, Elaine. You're just letting us know what's going on. Yes, uh, Jose Quintana is pitching on opening day. From Missio, apparently JD announced his signing on Instagram under a Frank Fleming post. Oh boy, he, he's going to learn pretty quick. Uh, from Jay Doffer, let's go Mets. I just learned this from you. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I haven't been on, uh, I don't normally do these live streams. I haven't done them in a long time, but I'm going to do more. I'm going to do a hell of a lot more. I'm going to do a lot more on my phone. It's much easier for me to do it on my phone than on StreamYard. Um, and this goes directly into YouTube more than, say, uh, you know, StreamYard does. StreamYard is the filter, and you probably don't do as well. Elaine says the Mets have new black uniforms. I saw a picture of it. Oh, God. It looks terrible. The reason they took the white highlight out of it, okay? The problem is, is when you see this from a distance, you can't see the name, and you can't see the back of it, and you can't, you can't you barely see the name on the front. I'm sure you probably can't see the name on the back because it's not highlighted. The reason you have that white on, on the black with the orange and the blue is to highlight it. To use my artistic background. You know. And because of that, you're able to see the names on the back, the uniform numbers. They eliminated that. It looks terrible. Terrible. The uniforms, I know a lot of people have been complaining about that. It's not a big deal. As long as I don't have to see you know, what's underneath their uniforms, they don't look that bad. But this black, the black jerseys look horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Uh, from Jonathan Matos, you are awesome. Thank you for your hard work. I work my ass off. You don't know. I work hard. I have a lot of hand, I got my hand in everything here. I cover all the teams. All of them. You know. Especially the baseball hut too. Cover the prospects with the Mets on the other channel. I would mention, prospect hut had 1,100 subs today. Never thought. Never thought in my wildest dreams that that channel would hit that. Never thought that. From Michael McMullen. To all my viewers watching my stream right now. 246, who do we appreciate? I love that. Okay, I don't. I, I don't know who you are. You're a weird guy. Eh, I'll put you in a timeout. I'll put you in a half hour timeout. <laughs> I should have read that first. Uh... <laughs> From Lane Kerner, can the Mets sign Jordan Montgomery and Trevor Bauer? You don't want Trevor Bauer. You don't want Trevor Bauer, okay? I don't think they're going to sign Montgomery. I don't know what's going on with Montgomery. Montgomery, was, the, the Rangers were very interested in bringing him back. And then they signed uh, they signed uh, Michael Lorenzo. So that, I don't know where he's going. There's all kinds of rumors that the Yankees are going to sign him. The Yankees aren't going to sign him. Resign him. Paul says Mets signed Who? J.D. Martinez. Can you read the title of the video? 
Let's get some more likes. I'd love to get 40 likes before we end this live stream. From Jay Dofer. Trevor is my third most hated player. And that was before his legal trouble. Huh? Uh, who's the other two hate most hated? Luis says this. Have you put any thought to who should be getting the captain position? That's not that one. Okay. Um, right now. Uh, if you want to do this based on longevity, uh, it is Brandon Nimmo. Um... And the fact that he's connected to the Mets of the past, he played with David Wright. He played with guys that were part of that last championship team, that pennant winning team. Uh, he has, he's an American success story, Brandon Nimmo. To go from a guy that did not have his high school team, have any team, he seems to be a guy that should have, he's earned that. However, he's not an all star player. Uh, he's not an all-star player. He's a guy that is, uh, he's a hustler. Uh, he's a guy that is, he, you look up to him. But he's an all-star, not at this, not this point. Lindor has had two great years now. He's been with the Mets three years. Uh, he hasn't been here long enough, in my view. Pete Alonso is a goofball. He leads by example with the power and the ability to drive the ball out of the ballpark. Right now, none of these guys, in my view, and it's not a negative thing on them, they're not quite there yet. From Lane, did the Mets sign Peter Alonso going into 2024, 2025 next year? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I, th I think the Mets will resign him. Because his most value is with the Mets. Okay. His value is not with another team. Paul Goldschmidt was traded from the Diamondbacks to the Cardinals. The Cardinals basically gave up nothing for the, in that deal. Um, meaning that the players that were on the Diamondbacks that went to them uh, never really made it in the major leagues. Last year was the last player that was DFA'd by the Diamondbacks. That was for Paul Goldschmidt. They got nothing for him. You look at the and that's not a premium position. Uh, uh, Jay Dolphus puts his, his players out there: Larry Chipper Jones and Freddie Freeman. Chipper, let me tell you something about Chipper Jones. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> okay, uh, in my view, I'll tell you why. In my view. He's a piece of he's a piece of garbage because he named his kid after Shea Stadium. I don't take that as a as an homage. I take that as an insult, an absolute complete insult in my view. That's an insult by somebody that used to kill the Mets. Okay, that's how I look at him. Freddie, I can deal with Freddie. You know, he kind of is a goofy guy. You know, he's he's more down to earth. Chipper's not. Chip is some dumb goober who gives the middle finger to us and then says, you know, I love you guys. Bullshit. You know. Uh, let's see. Hello, Francisco Gregory. You have to go to the top right. It's the three dots to hit the like button. It is invisible. It's there. Uh, Rodolfo says, could this be a game changer similar to the sign of the only assessment in 2015? No. Not at all. He's from the Philippines. Look at that. Who... Let me tell you something, folks. Where are you from? I have to ask that. Well, I'm in Queens. Shout out where you're from. I'm in Queens. Where are you from? Got a guy in the Philippines. I'm just telling you how I feel about Chipper Jones. I don't take what he did by naming his stupid brat Shay. I take that as an insult. That's an insult to me. Folks, if you think, if you think that that's like a compliment, that's an insult. To me, that's an insult. I take that as an insult. In the bottom of my heart is a Mets fan. And a lot of the people that think that this is great aren't Mets fans. It's the media, the announcers. Um, I hated Chipper Jones because he mocked us. 
He took our lunch. And then he named his stupid fucking kid after the Shea Stadium. Imagine if City Field, he had to call his kid City. City Jones. Just think about, just think about how stupid, how retarded that is. And it's, a, and it's a middle finger to us. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, his fallen excellent. Do you think the Mets have a realistic chance of making a run for Cease? Well, Cease has been traded. Cease has been traded. And uh, Bieber, right, why would you want Bieber? His velocity is down. John Means is not getting traded, folks, so. Okay. The, the Orioles are going to be in the... I'm going to make my prediction here. Okay. Uh, the Orioles are going to face the Phillies in the World Series. I have not put out my predictions yet. I'll have that next week when we get closer to uh, opening day. Uh, <clears throat> so, obviously, uh, I'll have a different kind of like... Things are starting to change a little bit. So i got to change the sort of, you know, uh, got to sort of change the approach that I have with the predictions. Mike says, do you think the the JD uh, signing makes us better than the Sillies? You call them the Sillies? You mean the Bud Light drinkers? The, the Phillies? I should get this Phillies fan that I know on the channel. I think he'd come on. Um, uh, no. I don't, th I don't think it does. I think the Phillies are going to go to the World Series this year. Uh, I think I think he's gonna be. I think they're gonna be going. I think they're going to the World Series again. I think they have a very good chance to win. I think the Orioles have a chance to win too. Uh, I would mention the Orioles have not won in forty years. They've not won since nineteen eighty three. So they have way overdue to win. And all these teams that last won in the eighties, they're all kind of dropping like flies. We saw that uh, a few years back. The Mets lost to the Royals. They won. Uh, Carl does not understand that I do not speak Espanol here. I speak English. So, if somebody can translate for him, for him, for me, let me know. Or maybe you can turn on his English uh, translator. But, uh, uh, let me see here. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jay Dolphin says, at least JD is guaranteed to be better than our last DH. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Uh, Francisco says, Martinez has been working on hitting a driveline. I saw, I saw videos of him. Now, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And, and, like this video. Let's get the 40 likes. Let's get the 40 likes. Lean says, the Mets win the World Series this year? No. <laughs> I mean, honest with you, I, you know, I have to see, I got to sit down now and see where they are in terms of win total. I was kind of thinking that they'd be in the 80 win total. Uh, between 78 wins and 82 wins. Uh, I think that I and I was thinking about this the first two months. I have to go through the schedule again. Uh, the Mets face, have a tough schedule now in April. Um, the Mets are going to be facing the Dodgers. They're going to be facing the Giants on a road trip to California. And to me, that is a uh, a big undertaking for this team. Um, and we're going to say, but I have to sort of. Take a look at the schedule. I do believe that the Mets will start to really pick it up when we get into June and July. And the reason I say this is I think a lot of these, uh, I think a lot of these um, prospects the Mets have, um, a lot of the prospects the Mets have are going to be coming through the system, like Christian Scott, Jet Williams. Drew Gilbert, keep an eye on. Mike Vassell. Uh, you know, and according to where I read it, these guys are getting close. Drew Gilbert was probably the closest. Um, and they're not going to rush these kids to, to get to the majors. But I think by the time we get to June, July, we're going to be talking about them a lot. And we're going to be talking about how they're getting close to being ready. I think we're going to, we'll, we'll know after 40 games what the Mets, you know, uh, problems are, uh, what the Mets' problems are in terms of their pitching staff, in terms of the offense, in terms of the bullpen. The bullpen's going to be the least of their problems. That's going to be strength for this team. With uh, And they have two lefties down the bullpen, which I'm happy about. Even though Deepman walks a lot of batters, he's a big 
big guy in that second left. He's huge. And he's a professional guy. He had a good second half last year. Had a good time in, in uh, Tampa. The Mets have had a lot of luck bringing in these guys from Tampa that are left-handed over the last four year, three, four years, starting with uh, Aaron Loop and now uh, Brooks Raley and now Jake Deakins. I think the Mets are in a good position in terms of the end of the game. Uh, when are the players of a team of Mexico going to arrive to the MLB? Like, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Yeah. One of the players of a team, who, who, you know, they're, they're not putting any teams in Mexico. Uh, Mexico is just a little too, uh, a little too dangerous. <laughs> but they wouldn't want the major league teams there on a regular basis in, in uh, Mexico. Um, now, over the next couple of days, I will figure out what the Mets need to do. Um, you know, in terms of the pitching staff, who's I haven't really gone over this. Who's the last guy on the bench? But, you know, that stuff changes over time. But like I said before, the first two months, I'll get a pretty good idea. I'll know after 40 games for you, folks, where the Mets are at. Okay? I knew pretty early on that the Mets were in trouble last year after 40 games. Uh, we were in a lot of trouble with this club last year after 40 games. You know, and and it and it showed. We saw how bad the pitching was. We saw how bad this offense was. And it looks like this team was extremely lifeless. There was absolutely uh, no life out of, this, out of this manager. Now, this year, we have a young manager. But he has managed a lot of games for the Yankees because <laughs> the, the dope in the Bronx is always getting thrown out. Uh, he's always getting thrown out. And because of that, Carlos Mendoza's had a lot of experience now managing games under very difficult circumstances where his boss is thrown out of the game. So he has experience. He has experience in the minor leagues. And the Mets have brought in a very experienced manager in John Gibbons. And Gibbons is a, is a, is a throwback in that uh, he will he will go, he will, no, he's got a little fire in him. And the Mets kind of need that in that dugout with somebody that's a coach or the manager. Um, one of the things I'm going to be looking for early on with the manager, specifically, is uh, specifically um, when the Mets get thrown at, and they will get thrown at. Uh, what you're going to see is how's the manager react. How does the bench coach react? And uh, what's going on in the chat here? I don't have time to uh, go through reviewed messages. Okay. You know, anyone that's involved with that stuff, uh, get a life, you know. And I don't talk about my personal life here on this channel. I never do. That's what I talk about here. It's nobody's business but my own. Talk about the Mets here. And we talk about our favorite team, and that's that's it. I don't talk. I don't talk about myself anymore. I, I don't. That's just how it is. Uh, Luke Riley, what's up? Uh, baseball. Yeah, the the great one. I didn't do my intro because so I usually like to do my intro on off camera. I like doing it on camera. Oh, I need to drink. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. Please like this video. Croissant says, do you like croissants? Eh, it's okay. Croissants are okay. Uh, why do you want me to say your name? I say anybody's name. If it's in the channel, say your name. Uh, from, uh, let's see here. Fallen Exion. Let's say that the Mets get Juan Soto. Where does Jeff McNeil move to to make space for Luis and Hal Cunha? Uh, that's a good question. Let's not worry about next year. Let's worry about this year. Uh, let's worry about this year. Okay? 
that's that's really to me is the most important thing is let's let's worry about uh, let's worry about this year. I'm not worried about next year. We got Jake the Snake Roberts. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. We got a big group of people here tonight. I have not planned on doing a live stream. I was doing, like I said, I was going to do a live stream earlier, but I kind of decided not to. And then we had this big news of the Mets signing JD Martinez. And that's why I decided to do this, this lovely live stream with you. Lane says, What is the news on Cody Sanga? He's, he's going to pitch. He's going to pitch now. Are they going to ramp him up? So in about four or five weeks, five, five, six weeks. He'll be back with the mess, so maybe sometime no later than May 15th. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so that, that's when we're going to see him back, which is exciting to have him back. And we'll see who gets bumped out of the rotation. Maybe they go with a six-man rotation. Who knows? That'd be great for this live stream. Like I said, this was unplanned. Uh, and obviously, the Mets made a big move tonight. In my opinion, it's a big move. It's the biggest move of the offseason, really. And this is not the offseason now. This you got the season. Uh, Elaine says, you like... I hate Dunkin' Donuts. Ugh. Ugh. I hate Dunkin' Donuts. Hate it. Hate it. Uh, Paul P. says, over, under, on Sanga is June 1st. I think he'll be before that. Um... Uh, I think he'll be here before that, to be honest with you. That's that's my opinion. That's my view. Well, everybody's concerned about... Uh, oh, yes. You can tell the shirt, right? <laughs> At the shirt. I got a lot of different shirts like this. It's way too many. Way too many. Uh, but I'll be back again tomorrow on the live stream, I think. Probably during the day. You know. And uh, maybe I'll have one Saturday, Sunday. We'll lead up into the big live stream in the morning on, on Thursday. And we'll talk about our Mets uh, getting ready to play the Brewers. It's supposed to rain in New York on Wednesday. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some good weather here on... Uh, uh, we'll get some good weather here on Thursday. It was really cold here today. I was freezing when I went out this morning. Uh... Francisco Gregory, is Peterson going in the bullpen? No, he is. <laughs> Francisco, Peterson's not pitching until the middle of the season. He had to get hip surgery in the offseason. So he's a guy that's not going to be here. Okay. He's, he, and it's scary at his age, he's got a, he had to get hip surgery. Elaine says, this, how do you feel about the Jets? I'm a Giants fan. How, but how do I feel about the Jets? I hope someday they win again. How many years has it been? They, they haven't won they haven't won in 50 years. They haven't, oh, 50 something years. They haven't been to the Super Bowl in 50 something years. That's a long time. And it's such an important Super Bowl, and they haven't been there since. You know, they, they looked pretty good years ago when they had Mark Sanchez. Um, and they looked pretty good when they had Mark Sanchez here. They went to two, like, championship games. And then he basically collapsed as a player. They collapsed as a f franchise. Uh, you know, it's funny. The. Injury to Aaron Rodgers on opening night, four plays into the season, is very similar to what happened to the Mets with Edwin Diaz. That's what a lot of people were saying at the time, that their, that their season basically went down the drain opening night. Uh, you know. So. Uh, let's see what else here. Lane likes the Giants. How do you feel about the Giants? I'm a big Giants fan. I was doing my Giants channel, but I'll tell you that the Giants and F NFL football, that is extremely, extremely uh, competitive. And it is very, very difficult to, to compete on that side uh, because you're going up against the NFL on their YouTube channel, the NFL Network, the... Uh, you got former players that do podcasts that are on YouTube. You got all these uh, former broadcasters that do all these YouTube channels. You have uh, people that have been, you know, done radio, they've done TV. You have all these former players, and because of so many players for all the teams, fifty-three t uh, players per team, and and most of them are American. Most of them are from North America, 
And the competition for that market is is just it's fierce. It's the best way to describe it. The baseball side, from what I can tell, I started seeing some changes. The media is starting to get into the, our, our platform here. I'm not too happy about that. Uh, is different because a good portion of the players aren't from America. So a lot of them, there's only one like a uh, player, former player, that has a, a podcast that is, that's not English speaking as his native language. That's caused by ergo. And and that's really what the difference is with baseball side and the, and the football side. I think it's something I've been thinking about. I just want to talk about it with you. Yes, it is 20 questions tonight. Uh, Lane says, how do you feel about the Yankees rotation? Well, they're in trouble. <laughs> I don't trust Rodon. He could be really good, but he, he's always hurt. He's got a lousy attitude, quite frankly. And he's a guy that is going to need uh, – he's, he's going to be a guy that the fans will really jump on if he doesn't pitch well. Nestor Cortez is a guy that's a journeyman, and he has had a good, couple of good years. We'll see how he pitches. Uh, but their rotation is not great, especially without uh, Jared, Gary, Jerry Cole uh, at the top of that rotation. And Cole not being there for a good portion of the season, they're in a lot of trouble. And the fact that they can't keep horses – I mean, they can't keep Aaron Judge on the field – on a regular basis, is problematic. I would also say the best player on the team now is Juan Soto. And obviously he's going to have a huge year. He does not get hurt. The guy stays on the field. He plays 160 games a year. Okay? The guy never gets hurt. Uh, he never gets hurt. And he's always playing. The guy is a horse. You know, and Aaron Judge is the opposite. John Carl Stanton is the opposite. Stanton's reputation with the Marlins was he couldn't stay on the field. The one time he stayed on the field, he won the MVP. They made such a big deal about him three home runs in spring training. Who cares? He didn't do it in the season. And they're all saying, well, you know what? Uh, some wise like, ah, you know, or, or in, uh, Evan and Tiki today. They're like, oh, you know what? Let's put, uh, let, let, let's look at, uh, at uh, John Carl Stanton as a, as a platoon player. Let him go up against lefties. Why? You're spending all this money on him. He's not going to be stupid. He's another guy that's going to get booed again. Mike asks, thoughts on Yamamoto start against the, the Padres today? You think the Mets lucked out by not signing him? Well, a couple of things about uh, Yamamoto. Yamamoto's been one of the best pitchers in Japan. Uh, and if you're good over there, you'll be good over here. It's his first start. Where is that the Korean uh, crowd really got on him? That the Koreans, the South Koreans really got on him in this game. Okay, they really got on his case. So he was a bit distracted. Plus, they, they shouldn't have pitched him in Japan. I mean, in, in Korea, Korea. They should have pitched him here and given him another week to acclimate himself with being in America. I think that's a little unfair. They probably would have been better off if, if he had, uh, um, you know, um, had not been there. And it's one start. He's going to have another 30 starts to his season or 28 starts or whatever. He's a great pitcher. He, he's going to pitch well. Uh, I do think a lot of teams lucked out on Shohei Otani because this thing with the gambling is going to be a major problem for him. Uh, he's going to have a big... The Dodgers are going to have a big headache. And I would mention that the Dodgers have done not done a good job. Have not done a good job... Uh, uh, vetting these free agents. Three years ago, obviously, they sent Trevor Bauer. If in a month Bauer was getting in trouble with this this woman that caused all this ruckus with him and his career. The day of opening day in Korea, this thing with the interpreter came out. Uh, from Mandigo, you think the Dodgers front office is worried about it? I don't think so. But it doesn't look good. See, here's the thing about this thing with Otani. Okay. You have like all this sort of sort of going back and forth with him. Uh, whether he knew about it. I'm going to point out something very important. And this goes for everybody that has bank accounts. If you're taking out massive amounts of money going to an, uh, into a wire, you're wiring money to a source. The bank is going to email you. Now, you sent half a million dollars. The bank is going to call you. The bank is going to email you uh, 
some kind of response asking you, did you approve this amount of money to be moved? And he knew he had to have known the first time. You can't tell me he didn't know. Now, according to the interpreter, he said that he took care of it. But then he changed his stance and obviously he took a hit for his friend. Uh, it's from Paul B. The gambling thing is going to episode in L.A. There's a lot more to, to this story than just the interpreter. Exactly. And federal investigators are involved with this because they were investigating uh, the bookie. Now, it doesn't seem like right now that the interpreter, that the interpreter is uh, in trouble with the law. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem Otani is either. But with Otani, if he was involved in any kind of gambling, he had a lot of trouble. Lane Kerner, also a.k.a. the Riddler. Are you going to Mets games? I was hoping to go to a game in Philly in May. It's a little up in the air right now. On my end. So, things, things are going to change here at the, the, the baseball hut, you know. So, I can't get to it right now, but uh, I'm hoping to get to a game in May at Citizens Bank Ballpark. But we'll see. A, a lot of it depends. On, on if I can afford it. Now, if you send me a super thanks, a super, super chat, that would help. Uh, nah, it's okay, uh, uh, Paul B. You can ask questions. There's nothing nothing bad about these questions. Trust me. I've heard worse. <laughs> i heard worse. <clears throat> I mean, that's the thing about Otani. He had to have known that this money was being transferred out of his account the first time. And and the bank probably said, is, did you approve this? We have an unusual activity with your account. He probably said, yes. You get alerts from credit cards for $100 or whatever. I think that happened to me years ago. Somebody had stolen my card online and they were doing stuff with it. Uh, Paul B says, been to a half dozen here in Port St. Lucie. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Bye-bye. <laughs> Boy, this phantom zone got, got heated up tonight, folks. My goodness. Hold on, I need a drink. <laughs> yeah. So you went to half dozen games, Paul B. That's great. Well, St. Louis is a nice place now. It wasn't it wasn't great when they first opened. There was nothing there. But they made a nice facility there. It's beautiful there. We're from the pictures. I've never been down to spring training. But with your help, I think you'll get me there at some point. Uh, now, I need three more likes for this video. Three more likes. Like I said, I'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk more about this. We'll have more information for you, I think. And we'll talk more about the ball club as we get close to, to uh, opening day. Opening day is a week from now. Less than a week from now. And if you can't be, if you can't, folks, if you can't be excited for baseball, if you can't be excited about the Mets season, then you're a lousy fan. Uh, you'll never see me, like, I have another hat here. You would never see me eat my hat. Okay? I understand that Frank Fleming does stuff like that. Uh, eats his hat. Has, like, these meltdowns. Uh... I'd never be like that. I, I'm probably the most boring person to sit with during the game. <laughs> I don't say nothing. Especially at the ballpark. You know. But, uh, Santiago Posada says, Thanks, man. I love your channel. Have a good one. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I salute you. Hit that like button before you go. Mike says, Who has surprised you the most in spring training? I, I think the guys that surprised me were on Friday. From what I saw. Brandon Sproot was very... I didn't barely saw him. Brandon Sproot was obviously impressive. I really liked what I saw from Nolan McLean. Uh, Jay Dover says, I've been enjoying WFN. I don't know why you hate them. Because they hate us. They've been abusing us for 35 years. Okay. They prop up guys like Frank Fleming and say that he is an example of a Mets fan. 
doesn't represent me. He doesn't represent you. That's why I don't like them. Okay. Uh, the only person at that radio station I absolutely despise is Joe Beninga. I know a lot of people like him. I think he's a he's a joke. He's a lousy fan. Uh, when the Giants played the Jets last year and the Jets were losing in that game, the Jets won the game. But when, when the Jets were behind in that game and they were losing, he left. To me, that's a terrible fan, and he admits that he did that. And then has the nerve to dance at the scene that the Jets won the game. In the summer of 2020, he had retired, but he came back in the summer of 2022. And I said to myself, this guy is a jinx. He's a black cloud. And once he returned, the Mets season went cratered. And I blame him because he is a black cloud over this on the radio. And he's not gone away. He's got, he's, he does a TV on channel 11 here locally. Uh, he has his radio program on the weekends at 10 o'clock, I think, on WFAN. So he has not gone away. Um, he is a black cloud that he, when he retired, the Mets played great in 2022. He retired at the end of 21 or early 22, whatever it was. Then he came back right away because he thought the Mets were going to win the World Series. And he wanted to be on the air. Or he was having issues that he needed money or whatever. But that's why he returned. And he's got this stupid podcast. Do the podcast, stay off of WFAN. And like I said, WFAN has uh, abused us for 35 years. They've they've twisted things. Whenever the Mets do something, like I said on my videos, their attitudes, whatever the, whatever the Mets do is wrong. And when they do it right, it's still wrong. And it's very difficult to get cut through that. And nobody criticizes their stupidity like I do. I've been doing it since August. Uh, and and obviously they they have their they have their little meetings before their shows. They have their meetings after their shows. So they have an agenda going into their shows, what they want to talk about. Uh, uh, you know. Um uh, they have their agendas about the Mets that the Mets don't do anything right. And I point that out. Obviously, I know that the videos have had an effect on Sal Licata. He blocked me on Twitter when I never had any interaction with him on there. He unblocked me. He went after Wardy, who's obviously the big Mets YouTuber, uh, because he couldn't do that with me. He's afraid of me. He doesn't know me. Uh, and he went after Wardy for no reason. Wardy never said anything bad about him or, or whatever. He said something mildly critical of WFN and, he, and, and, and Sal went after him. Uh, I know that the programming that the fan has changed. Their attitude about how they talk about the Mets has changed. Because now you see more fair and more balanced stuff being put out there on the radio station. I'll give you an example. Keith McPherson has been saying nice things about the Mets over the last few weeks, particularly about Edwin Diaz, and particularly at Francisco Alvarez. Um, so we have this situation that I'm trying to sort of get them to change. They've been doing that. I've been very happy with that. That's why I'm doing any videos on them. They haven't said anything crazy. Uh, and I thought that, and then them haven't brought in Frank Fleming to basically attack the Mets the first week of the season, or the first week of spring training. I thought it was so totally over the line and complete total bullshit that that you know that it had to be called out and I did that. Now the biggest thing is they've been going at the Peter Alonso since August, and obviously this thing with him is a big point of contention. They want Pete off of this team. Salicata says he wants the Mets to trade Pete. He has said this on the radio program, on his radio program, but he has not said this on his TV show. He would be he'd get thrown off if he said the Mets should trade Pete Alonso. Uh, all the Mets fans that watch SNY would, would have a, a riot. You know, and I've talked about his phoniness in particular because you can see that. So, uh, Lane Kerner asked me about the pitch clock. What do I think about it? It's fine. I didn't, I was very nervous about it in the beginning when they put it up there, but you don't even notice it. You don't even notice it. Um, 
it's not even noticeable. Uh, it's not something that I've noticed at all. So, all right. Of course, if you're watching on replay, please leave comments in the comment section. This was a very good night tonight. The Mets signed, are going to announce that they signed J.D. Martinez to a 12-year contract for one year. I mean, a $12 million contract for one year. And uh, I'll have more details on it tomorrow. Hopefully. We'll have a, hopefully I'll have a live stream tomorrow. Yes, like, comment, and sub, and ring that bell for notification. So when I do a live stream, I'm going to do a lot of live streams. I'm going to do, a lot of, I'm going to do most of them on my phone. Um, I'm going to, we're going to have a lot of... Uh, Jerry J. Kona says, Mets lose 100 games. Where do you get that from? Okay, the Mets have not lost 100 games since 1993. They're not going to lose 100 games. You need to start worrying about tomorrow and worry about opening day. That's how I'm going to lose 100 games. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that. Not going to lose 100. Not going to lose 110. They're going to be pretty good this year. Better than I thought they'd be. Because I think they'll get better, like I said, during the season. So hit that like button before you go. Subscribe to the Baseball Hut. We'll be back tomorrow in a live stream, and I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed it, too. This was a lot of fun tonight. And if you're watching our replay, send me a super thanks. It's great for the channel. YouTube loves it when you send me money because then they make money, too. So thank you for watching. Have a good night, and I'll see you later.